Hello everybody, this is Mina Azer and you are watching the Surgical Whiteboard. Today we are going to talk about the gastric carcinoma. First of all, we will take a look on the risk factors. It's divided to genetic and acquired risk factors. Genetic risk factors like hereditary non-polyposis, colorectal carcinoma or Lynch syndrome. Also, a first degree relative of a patient with a gastric carcinoma is a relative risk factor male gender and blood group A are, are, are relative risk factors. Acquired risk factors like smoking, atrophic gastritis, helicobacter pylori infection, partial gastrectomy, which is known as gastric stump carcinoma, and Menteriere's disease. Menteriere's disease is a, a rare disease. It's defined as hypertrophy of the gastric mucosa, in which we can see a huge gastric folds or diroges. It's also characterized with protein loss through the gastric mucosa, and is almost always associated with Helicobacter pylori infection. There is several ways to classify the gastric carcinoma. We will start with the Lawrence classification, in which the gastric carcinoma is divided into an intestinal type, a diffuse type, and a not determined type. Of course, this classification is a pathological classification. Intestinal types, about uh, half of the patients, is more common with older male patients and associated with Helicobacter pylori. Diffuse type is about a third of the, of the patients and more common in young females. The intestinal type is less or the relatively less aggressive in which the safety margin should be 5 cm. The second way to classify a gastric carcinoma is the TNM classification. This classification depends on the depth of uh, the penetration of the gastric wall. We will see here firstly the gastric wall, which is, uh, consists of a mucosa with its uh, characteristic folds. Beneath it is a layer of a muscularis mucosa, a thin layer. Then the submucosa and the musculosa proper. Then the subserosa and the last layer is the serosa or the visceral peritoneum. We should notice here that the, the lymphatic vessels are concentrated in the submucosa and subserosal layers. The T component of the TNM classification represents the depth of tumor penetration. T1A category is a tumor uh, confined to the mucosa, not reaching the submucosa. T1B reaches the submucosa and penetrating the muscularis mucosa. T2 uh, tumor reaches the muscularis uh, or the, the muscularis propria. T3 tumor penetrates the muscularis propria and reaches the subserosa. T4, the tumor penetrates uh, the subserosa, but T4A without uh, uh, penetration of adjacent organs, and T4B with penetration or um, infiltration of adjacent organs like spleen. Um, so here we can see this, the tumor uh, with the T1A stage. This is an early gastric tumor. It's unlikely to have a lymphatic spread because it didn't reach any layer which is rich with lymphatic vessels, like the submucosa or the subserosa. All other tumors penetrate these layers and uh, are more likely to have a lymphatic spread. The N component is the lymph node metastasis. N0 means no lymph nodes detected. N1, 1 to 2 lymph nodes. N2, 3 to 6. N3A, 7 to 15, N3B, more than 15. M is distant metastasis, M1 is presence of metastasis, and M0 the M0 is absence of metastasis. Now we will zoom in on the early gastric carcinoma. This is a tumor with T1A, N0, M0, TNM classification. It's further classified according to its shape into uh, type 1, which is a protruding tumor, uh, confined to the mucosa. Type 2 is a flat type or uh, it's subdivided into type A, B and C which is elevated, superficial or depressed. Or, and type 3 is an excavated uh, or, the ulcer or ulcerating type that may reach the submucosa. The classification of the early gastric tumor and the early gastric tumor itself as an, a separate entity is a crucial factor in the decision of the treatment. Here, the endoscopic resection is possible without radical lymphadenectomy in the following condition. Number one, protruding lesion. 
uh, not more than 2 cm or a flat lesion not more than uh, 1 cm no ulceration this means type 1 or type 2 tumors only histological grade G1 or G2 which is well or the motor differentiated and number five no residual uh, after the endoscopic resection otherwise surgical resection is also carrying more morbidity but with radical lymphadenectomy it's more safe and have a better prognosis this is a quick summary of the staging it's more complicated uh, but this is a good uh, overview stage 1a is superficial tumors without lymphatic or distal metastasis uh, it's confined to tumors uh, with T1A and T1P. Stage 1B uh, is also relatively superficial tumors T1 and T2 with only N1 with T1 tumors and no distal metastasis. Stage 2 and 3, any T greater than T1 with N positive classification and no distal metastasis. And stage 4 is any T, any N but with distal metastasis. Here we should notice that the uh, uh, type T4B, for example, uh, represents the infiltration of adjacent organs like spleen, uh, for example. This doesn't count as a distant process. Now we will take an overview uh, about the summary of treatment strategies. Stage 1A. When it is a T1A, this is an early gastric carcinoma. Here, endoscopic resection is possible, provided the condition we have discussed earlier. Stage 1A with T1B, radical surgical resection is enough and recommended. Stage from 1B to uh, 3, here uh, neoadjuvant uh, chemotherapy and downstaging is uh, recommended, then radical surgical resection, uh, then adjuvant chemotherapy. Stage 4 is the palliative treatment. Here, palliative resection plays no role except in cases of bleeding or gastrogenostomy in case, in, except in cases of uh, obstruction. Considering the stage four or advanced tumors, there's some new concepts that we would like to discuss. The first concept is the oligometastasis. This means uh, less than three lesions in one organ, for example, the liver. It's advocated to be linked with a better tumor biology. Here, downstaging and radical resection are uh, under trials. The second concept is the peritoneal metastasis, or it is always um, considered a sign of irresectability. When suspected in T4 classification, it should be uh, first excluded through other aposcopic exploration. There is another type of uh, metastasis, is, uh, which is the transcelomic metastasis, which is known uh, commonly as the Krakenberg tumor. Here, the gastric uh, carcinoma cells are shredded and seeded in the ovaries, but we, sh we should differentiate between this uh, route of spread and the distal metastasis through uh, blood or lymphatic route. Also under trial is the cases of, uh, in cases of peritoneal nodules, are the uh, radical surgery with the HIPIC. The HIPIC maneuver uh, is still under trials and the uh, results could be promising. It means surgical resection of the peritoneum, the whole peritoneum, then uh, applying a hyperthermic uh, intraperitoneal chemotherapy as a cycle inside the peritoneal cavity. When talking about radical surgical resection, there's three main concepts that must be considered. The first concept is the lymph nodes, then the on block resection, and the safety margin. We will start with talking about the lymph nodes. The stomach has a very rich blood supply and in turn a very rich uh, uh, lymphatic drainage also. The lymph nodes up around the stomach can be divided into three tires or compartments, N1, N2 and N3. The N1 tire are six groups of lymph nodes around the stomach. They are numbered as station one, uh, through sex. Station 1 is the right cardiac lymph node, 2 lymph, uh, left cardiac lymph node, 3 uh, and 4 the lesser and greater curvature, 5 and 6 the suprapyloric and the infrapyloric lymph nodes. Then the N2 tire are the lymph nodes around the great vessels uh, uh, supplying the stomach. They are the stations uh, from 7 
7 are the left gastric lymph nodes, 8 the common hepatic lymph nodes, 9 the celiac trunk lymph nodes, uh, 10 the hilum of spleen lymph node, and 11 the lymph nodes are on the splenic artery. From the surgical point of view, there is a D1 resection, which means resection of the stomach, on block with the uh, first sex stations uh, of lymph nodes. Uh, this means uh, uh, directly on the stomach lymph nodes. Uh, and the D2 resection is the resection of lymph nodes 1 to 11, as well as the first two tires of lymph nodes. This is now the standard curative maneuver. A third tire of lymph nodes is also identified, which is stations from 12 to 16. 12 is the hepatotidinal ligaments lymph node, 13 the posterior pancreatic lymph node, 14 root of mesentery, 15 middle colic artery, and 16 the paraaortic lymph node. Resection of these lymph nodes, along with the first two tires, is a D3 resection. This extensive resection is highly controversial. It's advocated by the Japanese or surgeons, but in the Western countries, it's not yet adopted. As we said, counter in the Western uh, countries, D2 resection is a standard curative resection. It carries more risk of morbidity, but on the other hand, carries a better, better survival chance and less recurrence rate. The current recommendation of the American guidelines is the resection of uh, a minimum of 15 lymph nodes, and the German guidelines suggest a minimum of 25 lymph nodes from the first two tires, so N1 and N2 lymph nodes. The second important concept in the gastrectomy for the gastric carcinoma is the on block resection. A gastric tumor can infiltrate adjacent organs uh, in two ways, sub, uh, through the serosa or through the mucosa. Through the mucosa to the esophagus and the duodenum, and through the serosa to the spleen, pancreas, transverse colon, or the left loop of the liver. The concept of on block resection means the removal of the tumor with the adjacent organ infiltrated. Here, the section of the tumor itself is prohibited because the, the phenomenon of tumor seeding can lead to more spread in the uh, peritoneal space. The only exception of the unplucker section of the adjacent infiltrated organs is an old patient uh, with a bad general condition unfit to extensive surgery. In this case, a D1 gastrectomy is commended because the risk of uh, transcelomic spread or recurrence which is about 25% uh, of the patients, is much less than the risk of morbidity after extensive resection in such patients. Splenectomy can be considered a part of gastrectomy and D2 gastrectomy to remove the lymph nodes in the hilum and around the splenic artery, as well stations 10 and 11. The third concept is the safety margin. The role in um, a tumor uh, on other gastric tumor surgeries is the section from the tumor downwards. This means proximal tumors uh, always perform a total gastrectomy, distal tumors, a distal gastrectomy might be considered under the following conditions. Number one, early stage tumor confined to the antrum with an intestinal allowance uh, type in which 5 cm safety margin proximally possible and cardiac lymph nodes are not affected. In this case, a splenectomy is not recommended to preserve the blood supply of the proximal uh, stomach through the short gastric arteries. Also, in cases of a distant, a distant tumor in the antrum, the lymphatic spread to the stations uh, 10 and 11 is highly unlikely. A summary of the surgical resection is the on block resection of all affected tissues, D2 lymphadenectomy of the first two tires of lymph nodes, safety margin or proximal safety margin 5 cm for intestinal type, 8 cm for diffuse type. This is called R0 resection, which is the best uh, curative option. R1 resection means infiltrated safety margin, a microscopic residual, and R2 means a macroscopic residual seen, like leaving uh, an infiltrated tissue. Um, in an old unfed patient. I hope you have enjoyed this video and see you in the next episode.